गुड मॉर्निंग आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ एक्यूट इन्फ्लामेशन अंडर द हेडिंग ऑफ भास्कुलर इवेंट्स एंड सेलुलर इवेंट्स सो टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द व्हाट आर द सिस्टेमिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ एक्यूट इन्फ्लामेशन इफ देयर इज एक्यूट इन्फ्लामेशन व्हाट आर द सिस्टेमिक इफेक्ट्स व्हाट आर द सिम्टम्स एंड साइंस विल गेट so first uh, system effect usually obviously there will be fever this is the common most common systemic effect and this occurs due to bacteremia there is large number of bacteria in the um, body so that is called bacteremia and due to this bacteremia, bacteremia and this fever is due to some release of chemical mediators already uh, i have taught you that these are the prostaglandins and there are some cytokines like interleukin 1 tumor necrosis factor alpha in response to infection they are released so the fever is happened and is mediated through these chemical mediators of inflammation then second effect is leukocytosis leukocytosis means increase in number of leukocytes so this all in all acute infection except some uh, exceptions commonly accompanies uh, acute inflammatory reaction and usually it is in the range of 15000 to 20000 per microliter so leukocytosis is another common feature in all types of acute inflammation except some acute inflammatory uh, reaction all will be accompanied with the leukocytosis so leukocytosis occurs usually in bacterial infection and it is mainly due to neutrophilia you know the neutrophils are first line defense cells so they will increase in number and in viral infection generally there is lymphocytosis and in parasitic infestations there is eosinophilia but typhoid fever which is an example of acute inflammation however induces leukopenia with relative lymphocytosis leukopenia means decrease in number of leukocytes so do typhoid fever is an acute in inflammation but there is leukopenia why there is leukopenia do it is acute uh, infection so it is presumed that it is thought that in some typhoid cases the bone marrow was examined and it was found that this bone marrow shows hemophagocytosis due to increased number of histocytes histocytes are normal immune cell that is found in bone marrow these are the macrophages of bone marrow so they increase in numbers due to stimulation by the bacterial infection so these cells it is found in the bone marrow in typhoid fever cases they they have phagocytized neutrophils red blood cells and platelets so due to these features probably there is leukopenia in case of typhoid fever i think you have understood this then next feature is the lymphangitis and lymph adenitis lymphangitis means the inflammation in wall of lymphatic vessels and lymph adenitis means there is swelling of ya yeah, inflammation ya yeah, swelling of lymph nodes the lymph node size will be increased due to swelling so this is also most important manifestations of localized inflammatory injury the lymphatics and lymph nodes which drain the inflamed tissue they show reactive inflammatory changes in the form of lymphangitis and lymph adenitis so the lymph nodes and the lymphatics we drain the inflamed tissue 
they only will show the inflammatory changes in the form of lymphangitis and lymphadenitis. The affected lymph nodes, the lymph node which is affected, that may show hyperplasia of lymphoid follicles. Hyperplasia, we know that there is increase in number of cells and there may be proliferation of mononuclear, mononuclear phagocytic cells in the sinuses of lymph nodes. So, this is also one of the important feature that is lymphagitis and lymphadenitis. Next, the most severe reaction is the severe effect is the shock. It, it, it occurs in severe cases and it is due to massive release of these cytokines that is tumor necrosis factor alpha. You know, this causes increased uh, vasodilatation. So, due to this vasodilatation and it also causes increased vascular permeability. So, when there is increased vascular permeability, so there will be intravascular volume loss, plasma or fluid will be lost from the vessels which lead to hypotension and may lead to shock. So, the net effect is already I told you the net effect because there is volume loss, so there is hypotension. So, if, if there is hypotension, there is no perfusion uh, to the brain, so that lead to shock and simultaneously there will be systemic activation of coagulation pathway which may occur leading to microthrombi resulting in DIC, dis disseminated intravascular coagulation, bleeding and finally death. So, this is the most shock is the most severe form of system effect of the acute inflammation and if it is severe. So, the mechanism is due to intravascular volume loss leading to hypotension. So, when I will teach you the shock, I will describe in detail how there is, there are the, what are the stages of shock. Now, coming to the, what will the fate of acute inflammation? Inflammation has happened already. Then, what is its consequence? That is what it, that is called fat of acute inflammation. So, first and foremost is the, the that may be resolved, that is resolution. Then, it, it resolution if there is uh, stimulus is withdrawn, if uh, inflammation is very mild, so there is resolution. But if it is severe, so there may be healing and if it is due to the pyogenic bacteria, then there may be formation of pus that is called suppuration. And if the acute inflammatory agent is persistent or it occurs recurrent, then that may lead to chronic inflammation. So, resolution that means I told you that the result means complete return to normal tissue following acute inflammation and this happens when the tissue changes are very slight and in that case these cellular changes are reversible. For example, resolution in lower pneumonia, lower in case in, in case of uh, lungs uh, uh, pneumonia, lower pneumonia. So, that alveoli are returned to the normal function. So, if it happens, if the tissue changes are slight and it is in mild form, so they, these tissues or cells will completely return to their normal structure and function. Then, if the tissue destruction is extensive, is severe, then that will be healed by fibrosis and there is no tissue generation, no tissue generation will be taken place. So, that will be healed by fibrosis if the damage is severe. But if the tissue loss is superficial, so it may be restored by regeneration. So, two things will happen in case of uh, tissue damage. If it is extensive, then there is no tissue generation, there will be fibrosis. But if it is superficial, then it will be restored by regeneration. 
then when the pyogenic bacteria causes acute inflammation so that will result in severe tissue necrosis necrosis i have already taught you and this necrotic process say progress to suppuration suppuration mean the early formation of pus so in that case initially there is intense neutrophilic infiltration after neutrophilic infiltration subsequently this mixture of neutrophils bacteria necrotic tissue cell debris and fibrin they will comprise pus and will form an abscess and this abscess if not drained they may get organized by dense fibrous tissue and in the time they will get calcified there will be calcification i already taught you what is the calcification so this is the process of suppuration when the pyogenic bacteria cause acute inflammation then if this etiologic agent is persistent or that is recurrent then that may progress to chronic inflammation in which the process of inflammation and healing proceed side by side both process of inflammation and healing they will progress side by side so these are the four fat of acute inflammation resolution if there is uh, changes are tissue changes are very slight so this tissue cells will uh, return to their normal structure and function if tissue generous tissue loss is superficial so that may be restored by regeneration if it is extensive then that will be healed by fibrosis uh, then third thing is the if pyogenic bacteria cause acute inflammation so that may progress to suppuration due to tissue necrosis and that may form pus with an abscess and if abscess is not drained that may get calcified in time then if the acute inflammatory agent is persistent or recurrently attack the body so that may progress to chronic inflammation so in this that in that case the process of inflammation and healing progress side by side so now these three things i will explain in a graphic so this is the agent of uh, acute inflammation so if this etiologic agent is removed or stimulus is withdrawn then there will be two things will happen if there is no tissue loss or tissue loss is very very mild then it will get resolved that is called resolution but if tissue loss is <coughs> extensive then that will be healed by fibrosis and if this tissue loss is very superficial then that will be there will be tissue regeneration but that acute inflammation agent is caused by pyogenic bacteria and it is persistent then there will be formation of pus which is the mixture of neutrophils that uh, mixture of bacteria neutrophils fibrin these are the <coughs> they will form the pus leading to an formation of abscess and that is called suppuration but if these acute inflammatory agent is persistent or recurrently attack the body then that will lead to the chronic inflammation so this complete the uh, completes your acute inflammation since the last last fat of acute inflammation is the chronic inflammation so i will describe in the next class about the details about the process of chronic inflammation thank you